All right, great. So uh, yeah, the final presentation of uh, today uh, will be uh, by Alexander Bentkamp. We'll talk about uh, joint work in progress with Jeremy Avigat on verified optimization. Uh, and we're back to Google Lean again, I guess. Please go ahead. Okay, thank you. Um... Yeah, so I want to, um, to talk about our um, project working on a toolbox for verified uh, optimization. Um, so this is optimization in the sense of fin finding minima and maxima of functions. And one of my screen just went off. Do you still see it? And still see the first slide. OK, that's good. <laughs> um, and uh, well, this is a joint work with uh, Jeremy Avigat, and we're just started uh, starting um, on, on this project. So there's lots that uh, remains to be done. Um, the motivation for this uh, is that we want to explore how proof assistance can be used by applied mathematicians for applied mathematics. And um, we think that uh, proof assistance can not only be useful to formalize one big theorem, but uh, they can also be used as uh, tools in, in, uh, in practice. Uh, so for example, sometimes just specifying that a mathematical model can be useful, even if you then want to uh, informally on pen and paper to prove theorems about it, or this specifying such a mathematical model can be used as a, a gateway to uh, other systems that could be connected to the proof assistant, like uh, computer algebra systems or numeric packages or also automated theorem provers. And then, of course, you can also use the verification tools to verify the results that matter most for you. Um, but uh, to make proof assistance usable, we need appropriate tooling in, in these systems. And um, one interesting thing that uh, we want to uh, look at uh, um, is uh, optimization uh, and also bounding problems and constraint satisfaction problems, because uh, these are used uh, everywhere in engineering, industry, and, and finance. And um, we are particularly focusing on optimization problems because uh, bounding and constraint satisfaction problems can en be encoded in some sense as optimization problems. And uh, well, as you see in the picture here, optimization in the sense of finding minima and maxima of, of functions. And it might be that you want to impose some, some constraints on uh, the domain of the function uh, that you want to optimize. Um, so to uh, bring um, uh, optimization into the proof assistant, uh, there are several diff different uh, tasks, uh, but our main focus right now is uh, the manipulation of uh, optimization problems and uh, reducing them to a standard form that can be then solved by, by uh, existing solvers. Um, the, uh, the benefits of using a proof assistant for this is, of course, that there are correctness guarantees, um, but also opposed to um, other tools that can do this order completely automatically, you have the advantage that you can uh, inter interact with the process and also do partial transformations, um, allowing you to introspect and explore the transformation and repair when something goes wrong. Um, and uh, to uh, repair things when something goes wrong, you have uh, a, a mathematical library at your disposal that you can use to prove uh, new transformations that uh, aren't covered by the existing tool set. Um, then there are some uh, related uh, tasks that are not our main focus right now, uh, but uh, should also be looked at. Um, for example, uh, verifying the certificates that are uh, typically omitted by, emitted by optimization solvers. And um, uh, another issue is uh, how can we deal with rounding errors of these solvers and uh, their use of uh, floating point numbers. Um, but as a main, our main issue, uh, our main focus is uh, manipulating of problems right now. Um, and um, we've started to implement uh, and formalize uh, optimization in, in, in Lean 4. And um, here's uh, our definition of a uh, optimization problem. 
the first thing you notice is that we only uh, did define minimization problems, but maximization problems can then be defined as uh, minimization problems where the, the objective function, the function that we want to optimize is uh, negated. Um, and then we have three fields, the domain, which could be uh, R to the N or could be a, a domain of uh, matrices or something more complicated. Then a function that we want to optimize, we are currently mapping to the reals, but uh, we're also considering maybe using the extended real numbers. Uh, and then we have a field for uh, constraints, which uh, might restrict the, the, the domain um, uh, of, uh, of uh, points that you want to optimize on. Um, so uh, once we have this definition in place, we can then define properties of uh, optimization problems. For example, what a feasible point is, it's just a point that fulfills the constraints and also what a solution of the uh, minimization problem is. I mean, a point that is feasible, that is that fulfills the constraints and then it has the property of optimality. So any other feasible point, uh, the, the value at other, any other feasible point is uh, at least as large as, as the solution point. Um, and we can also define what a reduction is, um, meaning uh, uh, a reduction from a problem P to a problem Q. And uh, we define this as uh, uh, being a function from the solution space of Q to the solution space of P. So intuitively, whenever we have a solution of Q, we can derive a solution for P. Um, now, this, uh, these definitions are useful to uh, reason generally about uh, abstractly about optimization problems, um, but uh, they're not so useful if uh, you want to define a concrete uh, optimization problem. So for example, uh, we want to give names to the different variables in the optimization problem. If we optimize over R3, for example, we want to have variables that are called X, Y, Z. Um, and uh, the lean four um, uh, parser is uh, very uh, flexible and allows us to introduce uh, our own notation. And uh, this is the notation that we uh, introduced for, um, for optimization problems. Um, and now we, uh, the, you can see we, we can explicitly define uh, the variables X, Y, Z and uh, also uh, write the objective function and the constraints uh, as one would expect. And then internally, uh, the, the, typing this triggers a macro expansion, which will then transform this, uh, this surface syntax in some more complicated syntax that then explicitly uses the, the data type that I showed you earlier with the three fields. And it uh, recognizes that if you have three variables, you want the domain to be R times R times R. And it also, uh, decomposes elements of R times R times R into, into X, Y, Z. Um, and then uh, we will also have to implement a pretty printing function so that uh, in the output of the prover, uh, this uh, uh, complicated syntax is uh, transformed back into, into the nice uh, shorter syntax uh, so that the user uh, never gets to see the complicated uh, version. Um, and yeah, so um, we are interested in uh, trans uh, transforming uh, optimization problems. And uh, uh, the one transformation that we are looking at right now is called uh, Discipline Convex Programming, or DCP. Um, here's an example of a problem that falls into this uh, category. Um, uh, and to, for this problem to be DCP, it needs to fulfill certain rules. So for example, the expression on the left of the uh, lower equal sign in a constraint needs to be uh, convex and on the right hand side it needs to be concave and then an argument of a concave function of a concave non-decreasing function like like the logarithm uh, should also be concave and so there are lots of uh, rules like this that determine whether a problem uh, is uh, DCP and if it is DCP then uh, we can uh, apply this DCP transformation to transform the problem into a standard form, the conic form, which is then uh, easier to solve. Um, the, the conic form looks like this. Um, this is much more restricted. It has to be a linear objective function. Uh, it has to have linear constraints and uh, it can also have cone constraints. Cone constraints means that uh, there's some linear expression 
uh, being an element of a cone. And these cones can be, for example, the exponential cone, which looks like this, or the second order cone, which looks like this, or a combination of these or others. Um, and uh, yeah, the nice thing about these conic problems is they're efficient solvers uh, for these uh, uh, problems, and not uh, on, they also emit um, certificates um, that can then be used to verify that the solution is correct. Um, so for this DCP transformation, there are uh, a lot of uh, modeling frameworks that can do this transformation. And uh, this is how they work. They take uh, as input a DCP problem. They will check that this is actually a DCP problem and then transform it into a conic form. Um, give the conic problem to a conic uh, solver. The solver comes back with a solution and a so-called dual solution, that is the certificate. Um, and then the uh, modeling framework will take the solution and uh, from that calculate a solution to the original problem before the transformation. And uh, our approach is uh, basically to add lean to this uh, list of modeling frameworks with the difference now that we can formally verify the uh, uh, DCP uh, transformation. We can also uh, use the certificate that the, the solver returns to verify the solution of the solver and thus uh, then verify that uh, the so solution that we get for the original so problem is also correct. correct. Um, yeah, so this is the idea. Um, so far, we have uh, 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 manually uh, transformed a problem in, in, in Lean 4. That is, we did all the proofs uh, 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 by hand. Ultimately, we want these proofs to be fully automatized and uh, user interaction should be only necessary for more complex uh, transformations or if the problem is not fully DCP and something needs to be done. Um, but uh, for, for now, we have done it by hand. And uh, we did it with this problem here that I showed you earlier. Um, and this is how it uh, looks in, in lean syntax. And the first thing that uh, jumps out here is uh, that we have these two additional constraints and these are there to ensure that we only look at values where the square root and the logarithm are actually defined. Um, and uh, in, in, on the left-hand side, uh, the, the problem as you would uh, write it down or uh, see it in the literature, these constraints aren't there because they assume uh, typically that the logarithm is minus infinity and the square root is also minus infinity for negative values. Um, uh, but, uh, well, and then they jump back and forth between uh, extended real numbers and uh, real numbers uh, as they see fit. And uh, this is not something that we can do in a formal context. So we need these additional constraints. Um, and then the first, uh, uh, transformation step concerns um, this uh, uh, expression here, x of y, um, and we want to try to separate this into a, a, a separate uh, constraint. And for this, we can apply a transformation that's called lineariz linearization. Um, we introduce an extra variable, replace the expression by that variable, and then we add this uh, extra constraint. And we have a defined a reduction schema for this kind of transformation and we can apply the schema and then we need to prove that it's applicable by showing that uh, this expression x of y occurs in, a, in an anti-monotone context, uh, meaning that uh, if the constraints hold for some well value of x, x, y, they also hold for smaller, smaller values and then we are allowed to uh, apply this reduction. And this will actually give us a formal re a reduction in the sense that I showed earlier. Um, then uh, the second step is to um, get rid of this expression square root of x here. Uh, for this, we uh, apply a transformation that's called a graph expansion. Um, and it looks very similar. Uh, in fact, the graph expansion is um, a generalization of the linearization. Um, we introduce an extra variable. We replace the expression by this extra variable. And then we introduce this uh, additional constraint here. And uh, again, we have a schema for this and we need to show that uh, square root uh, uh, this time occurs in the monotone context. 
um, and uh, that uh, we also need to provide a, a graph implementation. Um, so this is where the information comes from which constraint we need to add. And uh, graph implementation means that we can uh, write this function uh, in, in terms of being a greatest number of some set. And this set is then described in terms of simpler functions because we want to get rid of the square root and replace it by simpler functions, ultimately to get to the conic uh, constraints. Um, so in this case, we, uh, um, we use the fact that the square root of A is the greatest number such that uh, it, uh, the square of that number is smaller or equal than A. And uh, we do a similar transformation with the logarithm. Um, we add an extra variable, replace it by that variable, and then add, we add this extra constraint here. And again, here we use the graph implementation of the logarithm, which says that the logarithm is the greatest number such that the uh, x value of that number is smaller or equal than a. Uh, and that then gives us a, a reduction uh, from, from pro problem three to problem four. And then um, we can uh, get rid of these uh, additional constraints that we had to add in the beginning, because now the square root and the logarithm are gone, so we don't need them anymore. In fact, they are uh, uh, logically uh, implied by, by these constraints on that, we, that we've added, so we can just remove them. And um, then, uh, we basically have uh, a conic form. Um, we just need to uh, replace these inequalities by uh, uh, constraints that say that this is uh, some element of uh, a um, of a cone. Uh, so these two constraints, for example, can be replaced by uh, stating that some linear expression is uh, part of the. Uh, or is an element of the exponential cone. And uh, this constraint here can be reformulated as a linear expression being an element of the second order cone. And these two are linear constraints, so they can be just written as one linear constraint. And uh, then, we are, uh, then we have the, co the conic form. But the conic form, if you write it out, it becomes a bit uh, uh, long, so I didn't put it on the slide. Um, yeah, so this is uh, the manual transformation that we've done so far. So the next steps will be to uh, fully automatize this uh, DCP uh, transformation. And for this, we need uh, a library of graph implementations. So far, I've only added the square root and the logarithm. So we need more of, more of that. Um, then uh, a tactic for proving monotonicity, because this is always a condition of uh, these transformations. Um, then we need uh, tactics to perform these DCP steps automatically and some overarching tactic to guide the, the whole transformation. And uh, once we are done with DCP, we want to go on. Uh, uh, there are several things that we could look at, just extending um, the class of optimization problems that we can handle. So uh, for example, there's discipline convex concave programming, geometric programming, quasi-convex programming, and uh, the Berea method. Um, uh, and all of these uh, have in common that they need some kind of libraries, just we, like we need the library of graph implementations. Uh, for these uh, methods, we need, to, for example, uh, a library of su super and sub gradients of functions, or of sub level sets of functions, or of Berea function functions. And um, so we, we want to provide such libraries. But uh, I think a big advantage of uh, uh, doing this in a proof assistant is that um, uh, even though we can never provide all possible uh, a library that covers all possible functions that the user would want to use, um, we can um, uh, now in this interactive setting, we can ask the user to uh, uh, provide a function and we can provide a safe environment to actually prove that the function is, uh, or the, the, the property of the function, for example, uh, a, gra a gradient of the function is actually a gradient of the function so that uh, the correctness of the, real the results uh, don't rely on the, on the user. And, and then we also want to uh, test our toolset in, in a case study and uh, 
uh, one potential candidate would be a recent paper by Wang and colleagues who uh, um, showed uh, provided a um, transformation uh, to prove safety of hybrid systems. And uh, this is a very complex transformation using many of the um, ideas above. And so we think this is a good candidate. Um, and I think there are two points that we can do with this. One is uh, verifying the soundness of the theoretical reductions. But on the other hand, we also want to look at how can this tool be used to apply uh, the reductions to concrete uh, problems. Yeah, so um, that's what I, I want to say. I'm happy to answer any questions. Um, I also have three of them. Um, uh, for one, I, 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 uh, I'd be interested in any suggestions that you have uh, concerning the project. Uh, we would also be interested in knowing if you maybe you know anybody who might be interested in using such a tool set uh, that we could co collaborate with. We are in contact with, with uh, some people who use optimization in practice, uh, but uh, the, the more the merrier. And uh, also, if you know of any related work, uh, that would be interesting. Um, so I've, uh, <laughs> I've listed the related work that we know of uh, here, uh, although there's a lot more uh, in, in formal methods and uh, uh, like, uh, for example, a model checking to, for optimization and uh, engineering. Uh, but these are the, the related works uh, in, in, in proof assistance. So we are, we'd also know, uh, like to know if there's more. Yeah, thank you. All right, let us first thank Alex for a beautiful presentation. And maybe before we go into the questions of Alex uh, self, there's a, one question in the chat. Can you, oh, yeah. can you see it, Alex? Um, is there a reason why constraints are separate from the domain? That is, could the domain be a structure that includes uh, a type and the constraints? Yeah, the, that uh, could could be done, but I don't think it uh, would be very useful for our purposes because um, this is, uh, uh, I mean, uh, they are, they are, uh, if you look at the literature and this, uh, this is how optimization people look at these problems, they uh, look at typically uh, R to the N and uh, then add constraints on top of that to restrict the domain. Um, uh, we could even have considered to uh, just fix the domain as being R to the N, but um, uh, then we would get problems. If we want, to, for example, if we want matrices, we we don't want to convert a, a vector of length n times m into a matrix all the time. So that's why we uh, decided to have some flexibility on the domain. But yeah, so that's why why we made this decision. But in principle, you're right, of course. Uh, how are you handling the fact that Lean 4 doesn't have real numbers yet? Yeah, we cheat. <laughs> um, so actually we have, um, we have two uh, formalizations in parallel, one in Lean 3 and one in Lean 4. Um, and uh, the one in Lean 3 actually uses MATLAB and the one in Lean uh, 4 uh, uses a mockup of MATLAB where we just add the uh, well, we take the lean three MATLAB uh, lemmas that we need, translate them into lean four and add a sorry there. And so uh, the whole transformation is based on sorries, but we are confident that they can do that. But yeah, we are, we are uh, really hoping that uh, the uh, MATLAB uh, conversion goes well so we can uh, actually use lean four for real. All right, any other questions or maybe answers? Ah, so Constantine. Okay. Uh, yeah, so ah, I, I guess it's not so much about this particular uh, project, but uh, more generally about what you said, uh, computer algebra system. So I'm wondering what what uh, algorithms from computer algebra systems have been uh, formally verified, for example, like solving differential you know, ODEs, let's say with constant coefficients or something like that. Do you, do you have any idea what's been done in that area? Um... 
<laughs> no, I don't know. Uh, uh, I, I, I know uh, of uh, uh, one project concerning co uh, computer algebra systems. Hello? Yeah, that's not me. If, if, if somebody knows better, then please uh, speak up. I, I, uh, I, I don't know about ODEs, but uh, there's one uh, project uh, by uh, Rob Lewis and, and um, I forgot the other name um, to connect Mathematica to Lean. Um, this is the one project that I know about for computer algebra, but I'm sure there are more. So that doesn't. So that's not. It's not. So that's not verifying the that it. Um, well. So uh, there are lots of algorithms, uh, uh, like, for example, factorizing polynomials, where uh, you would like to call an efficient algorithm uh, in a computer algebra systems system, get back the result, and then maybe the result is, is its own certificate, or maybe you can get a, a certificate from the uh, from the external system to verify the result. So for example, if you have factorized polynomial, it's easy to check that it's correct, but it's hard to hard to find. Yeah, that, that would be the idea. Or of course, you can also say you want to trust the external system and you just want to use the proof assistant to verify other things. I think that's also a valid approach, why not? Um, so there's another question by Eric Wieser in the chat. Did you consider translating uh, variables X, Y, Z into a structure with named fields instead of uh, R times R times R, which might save you from worrying about pretty printing so much. Yeah, that would be nice. Um, uh, however, ultimately we want this um, uh, to be usable within uh, a tactic basically. Uh, and maybe there's a possibility for this, but uh, the problem that I see is uh, if you are doing this inside a tactic block and in, inside a proof, uh, you might want to uh, change the structure. You might want to add an additional variable and suddenly you need to change the structure that you're using. And uh, it seems to me that lean is restricted to have these uh, definitions of structures always outside of proofs, outside of theorems. It has to be in some kind of global context that, that at least that's how I understand it. If there's a possibility to do this with the uh, structures, that would be very nice. So if you have an idea for that, I would be interested. All right. Uh, any final question or maybe a final answer to one of the questions? <laughs> no answers. No answers today. Okay, okay that's pretty. <laughs> Well, if not, let's uh, thank Alex and, in fact, all speakers of this session uh, one more time.